Hey ladies, so we're going to uh, introduce uh, the animal kingdom. So, uh, I posted the video on fungi. You notice it was only like 19 minutes. Very short. <clears throat> I wonder why. Uh, and then I will post the video on plants. Now you guys had a workshop on plants? I, I'll post the answers. Okay, I'll post the answers. Uh, it should be in the box. So we'll, we can talk about that next week, okay? So this is really the last uh, formal group we'll talk about. But I'll, I'll, I can review some parts of fungi and plants later on, okay? So this is our kingdom. So we're going to talk about the animal kingdom. And we'll start with... A simple question. Which of these two things are most closely related? Yeah. Is that a jellyfish? This? Jellyfish, yeah. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Well, it depends on. I mean, closely related depends on what what I put in the group, right? So, which one? Which of these two do you think are more like each other? Wait, what's the white thing? So this is a jellyfish, or right? This. I believe this is like uh kind of similar to like a bed bug. It's not a bed bug. I think it's I can't remember the exact I think oh it's a dust mite. Not remember. Dust mite. Yeah. So uh, similar to a bed bug, which is basically like a tiny little insect. And this is a sand dollar. Okay? Now if I change the question and I added one more thing, let's say I added a human. And I said to you, okay, which one is most like the human? Then what would you say? Yeah. The dust mite? Why, why would you say it's a dust mite? <laughs> well, I mean, there are extensions that come out of the body, but they don't look like the same as limbs. The bug, the bug has an exoskeleton, yeah. Oh. oh. Wait, but I don't know. The jellyfish No, the jellyfish does not have an exoskeleton. They don't have it. This is a sand dollar. The sand dollar? Well, well, here. I posed a couple of questions. Why don't we come back to them at the end and we'll see what the answers are. Okay? So I don't want to give you the answer until we go, like, let's, like, let's explore these groups. Again, I'm not going to focus on a lot of the little details. It's always going to be about comparing the groups, right? So, what's an animal? In your own words, what would be a characteristic that animals have that other things don't have? Okay, do all animals have limbs? Uh, okay, are only animals multicellular? What else is multicellular? Some protists, plants, fungi. Okay, what else? They have genes. All living things have genes. It is actually that. They have this. So the difference is actually... Cause I'll be honest. The thing is, if you said, to, if you said for example... Uh, well, they can move. Well, you know what? Bacteria can move, right? Um, what I mean by moving, though, is going from one place to another. Plants can move, but not in the same way. Sorry? Say again? Hetero. Oh, phototropism? When, like, when a plant moves towards uh, sunlight? Some, are you asking about something else? Okay. Hey. Yes, but that's not the same as getting from one place to another. Yeah, I believe that's called thigmotropism. I can't remember now. Memory's really bad. Uh, so it's actually really hard to know what 
defines an animal. It's more really something like, I would say, this. That if you look at their genetics, animals have what are called Hox genes, which we talked about, right? Those are genes that build a body plan. And they also contain something called collagen. Now, do you guys know what collagen is? It's a very important protein in your body to hold you uh, together. This is a cladogram that we will look at uh, when we examine groups of animals. Okay. Um, so we'll talk about some of these groups. We're not going to talk about all of the groups because it's just a lot here. But you can see some divisions, which we will uh, explore in a little bit more detail. Okay. So the first, so if you look at this cladogram, which animal is considered to be the most different, or maybe we can say the most ancient? So periphera, right? So if you look here, all of these animals are more closely related to each other. I, I, one of the things you have to do in your test is know how to read uh, a cladogram. So in this case here, if I said, by the way, where would we be in this cladogram? We would be right here. We are chordates. So we'll talk about what a chordate is. But if I said to you, okay, what is more like a chordate? Is it an arthropod? And an arthropod could be something like uh, a lobster, okay? Or is it an adarian, which is a jellyfish? So it would be an arthropod, because remember how you read this, right? Arthropod and chordates share this branch point, but nadarians share... Remember, the further down, the more distantly related... The further up, the more closely related. Okay? So what, I want you to know how to read these trees. Yep. Then the same. Yeah, so like for example, if I said to you, uh, well, according to this tree, right? I mean, if this tree in the future ends up being changed, but according to this tree, arthropods and mollusks. So a mollusk would be something like a snail. So if I had a snail, a lobster, and a human, well, this would say that the arthropod and the mollusks both share the same branch point with humans, so they're equally related. Okay? Equally related. But they're more like each other though. Right? Because because they share this branch point. Right? They're more like each other than they are like humans, but they're both equally related to humans. So it all depends on how I ask the question, right? So let's look at the first group. What is the most ancient? And this is the group called periphera. Now, these are groups that contain cells that look like this, which we looked at before with cholinoflagellates. And they're pretty, pretty amazing creatures. Here's the thing, though. If you were to look at it, you would be like, that don't look like no animal. It doesn't, right? So what's really different about these guys is... Uh, they don't have nerve and muscle. So what you would think like all animals would have, like the ability to contract muscles using a nervous system, they don't have it. So like when you see the cartoon in SpongeBob SquarePants, he should not be moving and he should not be talking. And he shouldn't have a brain. But yep. It's, a plant or animal? it's an animal. I know, it looks like a plant, doesn't it? Yeah. So this is called this is a sponge. Okay. So when we look at periphera, these are those are sponges. They're animals because they have Hox genes and collagen, but they don't have a nervous system. They don't have muscle. So genetically, they're similar to animals because they're animals, but they don't look, they don't look like animals at all. Now these this next group, the Nadarians. So some of you are asking me on your on your uh, tree of life assignment. If you go by the levels. Like, if you look at the Nadaria, uh, what was the example of a Nadaria in your tree of life? Hydrozoa? Yeah, and what was the one that was a sponge? Calcarea? Okay, so if you look at your levels, Calcarea and Hydrozoa, you would not be able to tell that 
hydrozoa is more like us. Because according to the information in Tree of Life, if you just go by the levels, it doesn't say much, right? Yeah. No, no, I didn't. I didn't say it's an animal. Oh. No, I said it belongs to a group called Opisthocons, which includes coronaflagellates, fungi, and animals. So it's closely related to animals. So in your tree life assignment, if you want to add more information to make your tree more accurate, you can. But I'm not going to take away marks if you don't. Okay. So, for example, in your tree life, if you put like uh, if you put this group and this group as being equally, distantly, or closely related to humans, that's fine. But according to this tree, what's more like us? It's stuff like this, okay? The Medarians, and that includes Hydra, and it includes jellyfish. Now, so to me, a Hydra almost looks like an upside-down version of a jellyfish because here's the mouth, okay? <laughs> and by the way, these are the babies growing out of it, so it's kind of cool. Imagine you could reproduce where things were growing out of you. It's called budding, okay? So. They're more like us because they have muscle and nerve, just like we do, compared to sponges. Um, jellyfish, would you go ahead and try to swim with one? What do you know about jellyfish? They can sting you, right? So this actually is an image of their stinger. So it's kind of a, a, a kind of a nasty thing. So this is what actually you, you would be hit with if you were stung, and, and it can be uh, poisonous, quite painful, but, what's that? I, I heard that, I don't know if that's true, a lot of things you hear about that are that you think are true or not true. Um, so this, this is not a jellyfish, this is really cool, this is not a jellyfish, this is something called a nudibranch, you don't need to know this, this is for information, like for interest sake, this is a mollusk, okay? So a mollusk is, a, you can see, it's, it's a group that's over here. It's closely related to some other things like annelids, which are earthworms, uh, would be an example of an annelid. So this is not a jellyfish. But why am I showing you a picture of something that's not a jellyfish when I'm talking about jellyfish or nadarians? What's really cool is this. This, this organism can eat jellyfish and take their stingers and use them. So what it does, does anyone imagine that? What it does is it actually loads up its stingers in its own body. So not only does it eat the jellyfish, but then it uses its own weaponry. Isn't that kind of cool? What's that? How does it? With the mouth. You're seeing the back end of it. So the mouth would be on the bottom. Yeah, the bottom. Isn't that kind of cool? Yeah. By the way, the coral reef, you guys hear about the coral reef a lot. The coral reef would be uh, an example of something in this group called Nadaria. Okay? So Nadarians include hydra, jellyfish, and coral reefs. These are basically things that have a hard external uh, skeleton. Okay? So if you hear about, like, uh, the problem with um, all the carbon dioxide po uh, pollution, some of the carbon dioxide, I don't know if you guys know your chemistry, reacts with water to make carbonic acid. And if the ocean becomes more acidified, pH drops, that actually kills the coral reefs. I don't know if you guys heard about that in grade 10. Yeah. Say again? Carbon and calcarea. Yeah. What about it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Do you remember the question? Come back. Uh, let's skip over this. So, here's the thing. What's the shape? Mr. Barry? Yep. Do you have Mr. Farm next to attendance? No, I don't. Pardon? No, I don't. Oh. It might be in the library. Did it get picked up? Or? I, I don't think so. 
So, what do you notice about the shape of a hydra or a jellyfish? But if I said to you, okay, tell me what the left side of a hydra or a jellyfish is. Right. So, these things are radially symmetrical, which means they do not have a left and right side. So, if I was to say to you, what defines every other animal? What defines a snail, a mollusk? What defines an earthworm? What defines a crayfish, which is a member of the group arthropod? What defines a chordate, like a lion or a human? They're all bilateral. So, if you look at the cladogram... All of these things from this point have a left and a right side. So when we look at this group, bilateria, you'll notice that it does a major split. It goes to the right and it goes to the left. So the split actually has to do with uh, the way it reproduces. Okay? So, here is a picture of a developing embryo, right? This will open up and form either the mouth or what's the other opening? The anus, okay? So, the thing about the way an embryo develops, there are two types, okay? So, when you look at when you look at bilaterians, things that have a left and right side, and you look at the embryo, they develop differently. Um, there's two groups. One are called uh, protostomes, and the other one is called deuterostomes. If you look, one has the embryos form like a spiral appearance when they, the, uh, the uh, cells start to divide, kind of like a spiraling staircase. Whereas the other one is just stacked on top of each other. This is the way a protostome would develop. And a protostome are basically things on this side. So things like uh, crayfish, snails, earthworms. The deuterostome is the right side. So a deuterostome... When you look at the way the cells divide, they form like this stacking appearance. So it's different. But the name, <coughs> protostome and deuterostome, actually comes from the first opening. So in a protostome, the first opening is the mouth. In a deuterostome, the first opening is the anus. So when we were developing, our butts developed or opened up before our mouths opened up. Okay? Is that interesting? So what we'll do next time is next time we'll look at uh, the protostomes and then we'll look at the deuterostomes. Okay, ladies? And we'll uh, stop there. The end.